butt x rays. Yeah. Um, because she didn't really fit the pot away. Okay. <laughs> so we are oh, yeah. <coughs> we are live online and recording. So let's go ahead and make sure. <laughs> First off, let's make sure we're up there. Here it is, Chris. Everybody, it's interesting that it looks like we're clear on that monitor, but not this one. still appear to be good there. So, Warna, um, Ashley, you want to lead us off here? Sure. Um, so it looks like we're probably on pre-tib would be my guess. There's you are absolutely correct. Why do you say we're pre-tibial? Uh, so you have the increased vasculature and the superficial dermis kind of almost in these ball aggregations often with yeah. stasis dermatitis. <coughs> so you have cannonball-like angioplasia, which is a common reactive pattern on the anterior lower leg. Okay, and so what's going on on this shin? So there's some background edema, it looks like, an Apache lymphocytic infiltrate. There's a little area there where it um, looks like there's a little bit of a tippy. I'm not sure if it's reactive or not, and loss of the granular layer. It almost looks like a tiny poro. It's like one, two uh, millimeters there, but it's... exactly it, right. Okay. So you got a coronoid lamella, and so, you know, back to the center of poro can look like anything. There's your coronoid lamella. You know, beautiful on this side with the dyskeratotic cells and the angu angled column of parakeratotic cells and the center, because this is DSAP on a shin, the center is going to look the way shin looks when it's reactive, which is stasis-like. <coughs> okay, very good. So we got a bunch of biopsy of skin here with um, pretty unremarkable looking epidermis. Um, there seems to be um, perivascular and periadnexal kind of inflammation going on. It looks predominantly lymphocytic. Um, almost looks a little bit like kind of coat sleeving going on in the superficial vessels there. I see you said predominantly lymphocytic. How about this stuff? Looks like a little bit more larger cytoplasm, like histiocytic. Yeah, so that's a granulomatous here. Mm -hmm. How about here? I tell it looks more... I mean, from this power, they can lymphocytic. It's high in nuclear can you make it? Are they black circles or are they gray on a background of pink? No, they look a little bit kind of grayer. So, gray nuclei on a background of pink <coughs> suggests that that's, since you can see visible pink cytoplasm, which you would not see in a lymphocyte, mm -hmm. um, probably histiocytic. Yeah, okay. So, pulling back, so you got granulomas, 
Mm -hmm. and you have histiocytes, and what's the pattern of this histiocytic response there? Right, let's see. We are way out of <coughs> That's better. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Um, so the histiocytes deeper periodontal. This, I mean, it's kind of collected there, perivascular, periodontal. I mean, it doesn't. So, so these are probably perivascular, mm -hmm. right here, and horizontal to the surface, granulum horizontal to the surface, what do you always have to think of? NLD. NLD and also, NLD usually has collagen changes that are top to bottom, right. side to side. Mm -hmm. Anyone want to jump in, granulum parallel to the surface? Leprosy. Leprosy. So leprosy, there's the... Um, now recognized epidemic of leprosy in Florida is growing rapidly. Um, we are just a couple of states over and we have armadillos, so they're probably unrecognized here as well. Um, so anytime you see deep granulomas parallel to the surface, you at least have to think of leprosy. This pattern, though, is a little different. This is interstitial granuloma and it's focal and it's patchy. So what gives you focal, patchy, interstitial granuloma? Um, interstitial GA. Yeah, exactly. That'd be top of the list. So I would screen for two things in this patient. I'd screen for leprosy and I'd screen for diabetes, for you know unusual patterns of GA. <coughs> well done. Bunch biopsy. The, you know, the full thickness of the dermis looks kind of <coughs> sclerotic. There's not a lot of yeah, pale cells. and sclerotic, right? Mm -hmm. There's not really any annexa. Um, so, what would give you pale sclerosis of the dermis, especially the deep dermis, with loss of space between the collagen bundles? Uh, the first thing I was thinking was radiation dermatitis. So radiation can do that. Um, we do see a big adnexal structure right there, and you'd usually lose that in radiation. Okay, so like a late stage morphia? Yeah, so like a late stage morphia might be the most likely. That's exactly what I'd be thinking. Let's see. Yeah, like hack or if full thickness and a little more wind blown and anaplastic. Yeah, so you know somewhere between hypertrophic AK and bones. It certainly isn't invasive, and it may be a judgment call just how <laughs> anaplastic it is. But somewhere between hypertrophic AK and bones sounds about right, and that looks like an actinic horn. Well done. James, very fair slide. Well, good. Um, and it looks like there's some loss of the reedy pattern, and I can't really tell exactly what's going on from this power, but I imagine that you'll not be very willing to zoom in. So, um, <laughs> that's a fair assumption since the diagnosis is at this power. Right. Yep. Um, I'm growing up. Diagnosis from this power. Oh, I, I beg to differ. Okay. So first off, tell me about the epidermis. So I mean, it looks like there's some. Well, it looks like spongiosis from this distance. Okay. So is it normal thickness? It looks a little acanthotic. It looks a little acanthotic, and then your dermis down below. Is it a normal dermis? No. 
So a non-normal, so acanthosis sitting on top of non-normal dermis. Right. And then what are these little purple buds here? We can go a little higher on that. Thanks, Dr. <laughs> There's no shame in that. Yeah. So, um, are those like old nests of the morning or something? No, they're like no. little baseloid Baby. cells, yeah. and there's a great big papillary mesenchymal body there, a little whorl of plump mesenchymal cells. So, <coughs> this looks like little like little primitive hair follicles here. Mm -hmm. So what would have a non-normal kind of busy dermis with acanthosis on top of it and follicular induction? You don't want to jump in? Yeah. Dermatofibroma. Mm -hmm. So That's this would, cool. DFs get shaved every day. This is what a shaved DF looks like. It would be very, very fair. Right. So the key is acanthosis over a busy dermis, mm -hmm. which pretty much takes you to DF already, and then follicular induction. That's a great learning opportunity. Okay, Chang. Oh, this one looks like a subcurricle. Not very nice. So, does the follicle look normal? Uh, no, it looks have some interface to play. Uh, the, the, the experience in superficial and deep, maybe it lupus. Even. So, thought of lupus, given that you have some lymphoid inflammation around the ismic portion, so that's a very good thing to think. But there are a fair number of eosinophils scattered in that infiltrate. So we have a lot of EOs, and then what do you think about the epithelium here? Anyone want to jump in? Mm -hmm. There's some, exactly, it looks, you know, either spongiotic or like mucinosis, and with all the EOs down in the infiltrate, lot heavy infiltrate, lots of EOs around hair follicles that are kind of webby with mucin is follicular mucinosis. We're getting. And then your question would be, is this idiopathic alopecia mucinosa or is it MF? That becomes the next question. Shave of a uh, process that's creating a grand zone. Kind of against the yep. There's a grand zone, and then the cells are all different or monotonous. They're monotonous. Monotonous, and other than the erythrocytes, what's the color of the cells? Purple, blue. Yeah. So <coughs> small blue cells, monotonous in sheets, high mitotic rate. I would think like the lymphoma. Yeah. Leukemia, exactly. I mean, that's, well, they're not angulated. <laughs> leukemia cells tend to have a little cytoplasm and are angulated. Okay. They show nuclear molding. These are distinctly round and yeah. have no cytoplasm. So, um, you know, lymphoma would probably be higher on your, okay. on your list. For that. That's one of the hints for leukemias. They tend to single file between collagen. They're angulated. They have just a little pink cytoplasm. Whereas um, lymphocytes usually have no visible cytoplasm around them, just white around the blue. And can you just remind me of how, like pseudolymphoma versus lymphoma, or anything like that? So, pseudolymphoma, you tend to, it tends to be periadnexal. Similar and vertically oriented, similar to a marginal zone lymphoma, but you have very prominent endothelial swelling usually in a pseudolymphoma. Here, what vessels you see 
the lumen's pretty wide open. Okay. You also you have atypical mitotic figures. Um, pseudolymphomas tend to be a little more polymorphous, a little more top heavy. Okay, thank you. Okay, so you know that's where I would go. You know, go down. The other thing, um, Merkel cell carcinoma, other blue cell tumors. Mm -hmm. So neuroblastoma, small cell endocrine, oat cell carcinoma, lymphoma. That's your differential. This one actually um, supposedly stained like a Merkel. Mm -hmm. You know, not trabecular, not a smudged achromatin pattern as you'd expect. But you have to go through your small blue um, peanut uh, primitive neuroactodermal tumor, your whole small blue tumor differential. <coughs> okay, Rob. I too, it looks like um, the deep dermal uh, blue nodule uh, areas of caffeine uh, kind of amorphous material. And is the nodule diffuse and uniform, or is it broken up into little nested-like things? Kind of broken up into nested. And those nested things, do they fit together like pieces of a puzzle on leading the witness? Yes, they do. They do kind of fit together like pieces of a puzzle. And can you make out that at the periphery you have a rim of darker gray cells, and then centrally you have or paler gray cells. So the inflamed areas like this are more spiratinoma-like. The other areas are more cylindroma-like. It's variants of the same tumor. So some people might call this a cylindroma. There's a spiratinocylindroma. It's, it's fine. It's benign sweat gland tumor. Either one would be fine. OK. Brian. So a thin shape here, and there in the center you got an area of focal acanthosis. Okay. And then um, kind of some whole pallor pretty high up there. Like the so pallor and acanthosis, agree. Mm -hmm. um, Your nuclei? Nuclei, they don't quite have like a windblown pattern all over, but they do look a little bit atypical. Yeah, larger. certainly larger, hyperchromatic, atypical, mm -hmm. and like it's it. in a nested pale cell pattern within the epidermis. So what do you think? Um, would you say that's pagetoid spread? Um, pagetoid would be buckshot scatter. This is more nested, is more so Yadison phenomenon with intrapidermal nesting. Um, probably just uh, maybe the compound. Uh, Neelis? Who? No. Boy, you were, your diagnosis was right on, or your description was right on. Um, if these are keratinocytes, um, so pale nested, atypical keratinocytes nested within the epidermis, you don't want to jump in? Bowens. Okay. I thought we were, I guess I got. Uh, um, out there with the nesting, the yeah. That so seen. nests of melanocytes tend to be at the DE junction. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Intraepidermal nesting, the autism phenomenon you see with intraepidermal paromas and Bowens and pagets. Okay. <coughs> One of the things in terms of the windblown pattern, take a look up on the screen. Are your nuclei? uniformly spaced, or are there areas where they're more clustered and other areas where they're more spread out? If you can make areas where they're more clustered and other areas where they're more spread out, that, you know, that counts as windblown. That's, you know, they're not maturing, they're not spaced <coughs> normally. So that counts for the, for the <coughs> yeah. Okay, you guys are, you're doing well. <clears throat> right. These will get easier and easier, and you'll go faster and faster.
So, <coughs> Kahn or keratinocyte perforation is the extending off of the epidermis. <coughs> the acanthalytic cells loose in the upper dermis. Thinking it's just an acanthalytic squamous. You are right on. Someone pass that easy button over. Yeah, it's right in front of you. It's the appropriate right position. There. That was easy. <laughs> Very good. So, um, you have cells, again, look at the pattern of the nuclei. In some areas they're clustered, in some areas they're no nuclei. Compare that with the normal epidermis where the nuclei are evenly spaced. The nuclei here are too large, too dark, too clustered. Um, that tells you it's an atypical epithelium, it's budding downward, and it's acanthalytic. So you're absolutely correct, acanthalytic squamous cell carcinoma. Very good. Sure, this is good. I'm trying to see where we have our shading. I'm sorry, sir. Okay. No, there's, uh, it's supposed to, we paid a lot of money for the objectives that have a computer chip, so they're supposed to correct the shading, and it keeps turning itself off. Um, we'll, we'll get the tech people in here and get it fixed. So, um, so my apologies for the shading defect. So this is a this is a good field to start on. So what do you All say? Right. Yeah. So you see kind of a, a broad shave with kind of a bulbous reedy pattern. It looks like I mean from it's a slide on my from where I'm sitting, it's a little faded, but it looks like an acidic proliferation with nesting at the um, tips of the reedy. Um, there is some bridging across reedy. Sounds pretty good. Big, big so, what do you think? Of? Producing. I mean, it it's, that doesn't like look like melanoma to me. I don't see a lot of features of melanoma, so it might just go for um, atypical nevus, like Clark's nevus. Yeah, atypical nevus, Clark's nevus, dysplastic nevus, all the same thing, right? So you've got bulbous reedy, you've got bridging of adjacent reedy, you have you can see the fibroblasts here following the pattern of the reedy, so you have concentric fibrosis, the nests and the melanocytes tend to be aggregated at the tips and sides <coughs> of reedy with really nothing in the arches. So the nevus of a Clark's type of variety. This would be a good one. So a relatively large uh, portion of skin. Um, there seems to be some compact um, cortified layer overlying a slightly acanthotic epidermis. Um, and then underneath that are some dilated uh, muscular arterioles. Yeah, so they're vessels and they're kind of on the muscular side. Are they all muscular no, though? Or do you so there's probably some venous as well, so I guess this is probably the uh, Exactly. So an AVM. So you have thick walled and thin walled vessels proliferation together. So AV malformation. Well done, sir. Skip that one. side to the other. Okay, uh, so I'm seeing a broad, poorly nested melanocytic proliferation. 
Um, the nests are pretty poorly nested and there is some pagetoid spread. I'd be curious about the site of this biopsy. Because um, some of the nests remind me of special site nevi. In that they're poorly cohesive. Po poorly cohesive, sorry, not poorly nested, more the yeah. poorly cohesive nature. Um, some of the pagetoid spread in between the nests, though, does bother me. Um, and so I'm at melanoma in site two. Yeah, that's a good place to be. So let's look at this. We're going to approach this a few ways. So one is, we're just going to pan across it, is your epidermal pattern, your epithelial pattern, uniform throughout the lesion, or are there some areas where it's complex, like an SK. budding, almost SK-like, yeah. and other areas where it's flat and effaced? Yes. So that change of patterns change of the nesting pattern, change of the epithelial pattern, change of the inflammatory pattern from right to left is bad. Nevi are boring. From one side to the other, they're pretty much the same. The epidermis has the same pattern, the melanocytes have the same pattern, the inflammatory cells have the same pattern. Melanomas are very interesting. They change from right to left. The pattern keeps changing. The nests here, are they tips and sides of reedy, or are they kind of smack dab in the middle of the epidermis? Middle. And areas where non-nested units predominate over nests. Yeah. So all of those things bad. And for all of those reasons, as you said, <coughs> we'll leave on the inside too. <coughs> OK. So, kind of some hyperkeratosis, overlying some pale keratinocytic kind of acanthosis. Um, let me think about a hack at this power, but. Okay, I guarantee that would be on your pick list. So, you look here and I see a big horn. Mm -hmm. Is it uniform or is there some compact like red stuff? Compact red stuff. Yeah, yeah, so it's almost like a scale crust or a crusted horn. Um, there definitely is pallor and acanthosis. Under that, what's all this intensely staining stuff? I can tell that from this power, I can't tell if it's extravasated reds or. Reds would be much brighter red. Okay, can we use keratin? So anyone want to jump in? What is that? Collagen. Or fibrin. Yeah, absolutely fibrin. And then see all these tiny little vessels out here? Mm -hmm. So what would have a crust, acanthosis, fibrin, surrounded by vessels? Little proliferation of vessels. CNH. Well done, sir. That's exactly what it is. <coughs> Oh, yeah. did I say it? <laughs> Tom said it. Oh, Tom, Tom said it. it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to cheat. <laughs> okay, sorry. We're not stealing your easy button there. Okay, so absolute, absolutely CNH. And all, all of these are chosen because they're sort of like right on fair level. Right? Um, so you have a scale crust overlying either an ulcer or acanthosis with a column or zone of fibrin surrounded by a zone of little vessels granulation tissue. That's CNH. Do you have to see the cartilage? No. If you don't have to see the cartilage, you may not be given the cartilage. So we have a, a well-circumscribed dermal nodule. Yep. Um, let's see, there's squamous eddies in here, or um, or more like a keratin ploy, I guess. Yeah. So there are lots of there are lots of keratin pearls, lots of horn cysts. Horn cysts. And in fact, lots of things that look almost like follicular infundibulum here, little circles. Um, so, like a, <coughs> like a vellus hair cyst. So, vellus hair cyst would be a solitary cyst with keratin and vellus hairs. Mm -hmm. Here, you have pink anastomosing strands, blue buds at the periphery, 
horn cysts, and infundibular-like spaces. So pink, mm -hmm. pink strands, blue buds, horn cysts. Um, Anyone want to jump in? Infundibular cystic BCC. Infundibular cystic BCC. Very common, very fair, very real life. Basal cells are blue, except when they're red. What are the red basal cells? Pinkest tumor and infundibular cystic. Pink strands, blue buds at the periphery, horn cysts, infundibular cystic BCC. If you're going to be a surgeon, you need to know this. If you're going to be a medical derm, you need to know this. So it hits like the broad spectrum of everybody needs to know these. So the red basal cells, very important because people miss them. So pink strands, blue buds at the periphery, horn cysts. Infundibular light spaces, which is why it's called infundibulocystic BCC. Kind of describes exactly what you're seeing. <coughs> Um, so, like you have a really well circumscribed um, nodule here, mainly made up of pink, pink okay. cells. So, pink cells, cells, which are probably epithelial cells. Mm -hmm. What are the white spaces in the pink cells? Um, they look like little um, thinking glandular spaces. Yeah, glandular spaces are ducts. Mm -hmm. And what's the dull pink stuff within the ducts? Probably sweat. Sweat. So this is a shreddy tumor, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a big shreddy tumor mm -hmm. um, with, and the ducts are sitting off by themselves, or are they anastomose? They look sort of anastomose. So you have anastomosing pattern of sweat-filled ducts with mm -hmm. pale amphiphilic connective tissue in between. What would be a nodule of branching and alveolar ducts? <coughs> For some reason I was thinking of the syringes to send. So S-PAPs connect to the surface okay. um, it, where you can um, slide into the S-PAP. Mm -hmm. So S for slide. Mm -hmm. um, and HPAP, this is too red to be an HPAP. HPAP are blue tumors. Okay. So a red tumor and asthmosing ducts surrounding pale connective tissue. Anyone want to jump in? Mixed tumor, Mixed tumor of skin. So <coughs> if you are looking at a sweat gland tumor and you don't know what it is, think mixed tumor. Okay. okay. So we had one resident who, 30 questions on the test, 20 of the questions, their answer was mixed tumor. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it, didn't know what it was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's fair because there's a big spectrum of appearance of mixed tumor. If it's something that's sweat ducty and you don't know what it is, at least think of mixed tumor. It's a nodule. The ducts tend to be red. Branching, so branching alveolar usually surrounding areas of pale amphiphilic connective tissue. So it's all a pattern diagnosis at scan. So for the board, do you have a, a box of slides and then you have like a, a paper that has multiple choices? Oh, that can change any day. So um, there are various things that have been done over the years. There has been the box with the long pick list. There has been the fill in the blank. You get five points if it's on your first line, three points if it's on your second line, one point if it's on your third line. And your, your differential? Yep. Um, which mimics real life where you have to have a differential and you have to, you know, how high in your differential do you put something? And that could be used for clinical, could be used for class. Um, um, so all of those things are possible. And then there's an image, not a glass slide, which um, though, um, you know, there have been images and there will be more images um, because they can't, they can't go to a cheaper exam that you can take from home until it's an all electronic exam. So as long as there's glass, 
they're tied to the Board of Pathology Testing Center. So, I mean, that's been publicly announced for a long time, that they're going to try to push it and drift. And um, if you know it and you know it cold, then it doesn't matter how they ask the question, right? So the easiest way is just to look at it, you know it, and then, you know, bring it on. Ask it any way you want. Um, and the only way you get there is volume, 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 fast, 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 fast. So I'm going to stop talking, and we're going to do volume, volume, volume. So you have this big nodule in there, and um, there's some spaces. Okay, and the spaces are uh, filled like with... To me, it looks like small vascular spaces. Yeah, like vascular. small vascular spaces. <coughs> and they tend to be irregular or, for the most part, round. Um, the cells or the spaces? The spaces. Yeah. They look pretty round. Though, yeah, they look sense. pretty round. And that usually means malignant or benign. Benign. Yeah. So probably a benign vascular tumor. There's some recognize the color of the fibrin like we had in the CNH. Mm -hmm. So there's some clot within it. So, you know, this is going to be somewhere in a hemangioma spectrum. <coughs> Bowen's disease and what part of the body did this Bowen's probably come from, where it's composed of these uniform small dark cells. Yeah, exactly. This is genital Bowen's. Um, very recognizable pattern. This is HPV-induced genital Bowen's. So most Bowen's, the cells are big, where they're these small, blue, tightly packed cells. You've got almost no cytoplasm because it's all nucleus, all blue nucleus. This is a genital Bowen's pattern. Genital Bowen's is also far more likely to have underlying chunks of amyloid, which this has. So, that's a very typical genital BD type of pattern. Okay. Christina. <coughs> Oh. I'm sorry. Oh. Robert, you want to take it? You can. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to let you have it. Christina is <laughs> kind and willing to share. Um, so it's, I'm looking at fat in the center of this biopsy. Yeah, so is it in a place where you're supposed to have fat? No. So okay, so there's fat up high, and is it fat by itself or fat with fat fibrous proliferation? Stroma and fibrous proliferation. Yeah, so it's a so it's a fibro fatty stroma of some sort, and that fatty, fat, fibro fatty stroma has what kind of other elements in it? Uh, it's like what's like foamy cells in there, but yeah, like foamy cells with epithelium around them. So anyone jump in at this power? Sebaceous. sebaceous. Yeah, so those are follicu sebaceous follicular units. Okay. So this whole thing, you've got this fatty, fibrous stroma around big sebaceous glands. Anyone want to jump in? Follicular sebaceous hematoma. Follicular sebaceous hematoma. Absolutely. Very common. And often the stroma is more prominent than the, um, just like what's the difference between a trichodiscoma and a fibrofolliculoma? The plane of section. A trichodiscoma is a fibrofolliculoma where all you're seeing is the stroma. It's the same tumor. It's just plane of section phenomenon. You get the same thing with all the pilar tumors. So this is just a cut through the Follicular sebaceous hamartoma. You can also call it follicular sebaceous cystic hamartoma, although the cystic part is variable. Um, depending on your cut, it may be mostly stroma or mostly epithelium. Oh. And you got to recognize anywhere along that, anywhere along the cut. Because what you get in the lab, 
you know, you just read what they send you. Let's see if that's, this is worth doing. Yeah, it's worth doing. And is the atypia everywhere, or is the atypia only where the large gray cells with the vacuolated cytoplasm are? Um, it's more superficial. Yeah, sort of like a band of the <coughs> cells with large gray nuclei and vacuolated cytoplasm. So is um, it It looks halfway to Bowen's. Um, anyone want to jump in with a thought? I'm sorry, say it again. Like a, flat like a flat wart, exactly. So, and if you have a flat wart where you have a little bit of blue bubbly cytoplasm mm -hmm. and then EDV, absolutely. So here the EDV change is, you don't really see much of that blue foamy cytoplasm that's so characteristic for EDV. But you do see a flat wart with a little jumbled atypia adjacent. So you think of the possibility of epidermal dysplasia for suformis. Very good. But basically, it's a flat wart. You are correct. So this one looks like a pretty large pedunculated papule. Very good. And then uh, within it, all these what look to be mostly blue islands. Very yes. good. Um, seem to go from. And at this power, because the exercise is to train your eye to recognize things at this power, because 99% of the job is pattern recognition at scan. And right now, it, it seems painful. Um, by the end of the year, it'll be a waste of time going higher. So you've got these cells, and they're a little bit amphiphilic. You can tell they have a little bit of cytoplasm. And then towards the center, see how they become very dark, and you get these crack-like spaces in them? Mm -hmm. So that pattern of these nests in the dermis, where centrally they become hyperchromatic with crack-like spaces, is mm -hmm. typical for anyone want to jump in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nevus. Exactly. Those are the pseudovascular spaces that occur as a as a processing artifact in a nevus. So you've got these nests of amphiphilic cells. To the center, they become very hyperchromatic. Look like they're crack-like, almost angiosarcoma crack-like little spaces lined by hyperchromatic cells. That's a nevus. We can go higher. You know, once you've nailed the diagnosis, then go as high as you want. What's the uh, those foamy cells that you can see in the congenital nevus? Um, I'm not sure. Um, maybe let's look it up after the session. Show me what you're um, <coughs> referring to. Um, there are ones that are sebacite like Maybe that's okay. Let's look because I I may just not know it. Okay. <coughs> there was a piece of cartilage that we whipped past. Correct, right there. And then what else do you have? So you have centrally in the epidermis, there is a little bit of acanthosis. A little bit of acanthosis, and then what's this stuff? There's some fibrin. There's some fibrin, and adjacent to the fibrin? Forming some kind of granulation tissue. So good for CNH. CNH, absolutely. And this one, you got the cartilage. Um, basically, you don't deserve it that good, you won't get it that good. Um, but, you know, the cartilage is a nice clue if you have it. More likely, you'll have only what's required for diagnosis, which is ulcer, acanthosis, or crust, column of fibrin, adjacent granulation tissue. 
all pattern diagnosis from scan. That's a good one. Okay, so the dermal um, kind of nodule collection of Um, looks like spindle cells in the dermis yep. um, with some vascular spaces in their space. Um, okay, so spindle cells and um, is it uniform or are there some cleft-like spaces? Yeah, there's cleft-like spaces. And what do you call it where the nuclei line up like that and then you've got a pinker area and then the nuclei are lined up again on the other side. So like the, um, the varicate, is it varicate yeah. bodies? So it's palisaded in a varicate like body. So what forms a superficial oblong, usually oval collection in the dermis? with spindle cells that have some tendency to palisade in varicate-like bodies and is clefted. Schwannoma. Um, although schwannomas are deep and encapsulated with That's subcapsular PEN. edema, PEN, when it's superficial, palisaded, encapsulated in Roma. The term palisaded comes the fa from the fact that they often have varicate-like bodies. Um, but they don't have to be palisaded, they don't have to be encapsulated, and they're not a true neuroma, so the old thing is, what would you call something that's not palisaded, not encapsulated, mm -hmm. and not a neuroma? Yeah, PEN, of course, if you're a dermatologist, naturally. Um, but they can have a little bit of a capsule. They, um, usually they don't have a capsule, despite the name. Um, they're variably palisaded, but what they always are is superficial, oval collection of spindle cells with clefts. Whereas a schwannoma is deep, encapsulated with a crescent-like zone of subcapsular edema. Would they put the two of those on a multiple choice to discern <coughs> between them and you're just going up the depth? Um, I, I don't know what they would do. Um, Hypothetically, I'm asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't put together the derm path portion. That's, I mean, that's the only part of the exam I have nothing to do with, is the derm path portion. So I can teach you um, what, the, I mean, no absolutely they could. Why yeah. not? Um, it, it's, the question would be, is it fair? Is it a fair differential? Mm -hmm. Absolutely that's a fair differential. So yeah. why not? Okay. Broad shape by tubes <coughs> with most of the action in the um, away from the epidermis. I don't want to see much of the interface process. Okay. Sort of aggregates of sort of a mix of plummet infiltrate. Um, composed of? Composed of uh, lymphocytes and histiocytes, and then these larger histiocytes, maybe a plasma or mass of cell. Maybe. Yeah, some plasma cells, eccentric yeah. nucleus, perinuclear, pale hop. So you got plasma cells limbs, histiocytes, kind of arranged around follicles and the superficial dermis. Mm. And then vascular lumen seem either thrombosed or, or swollen shut. Oh. Yep, okay. So what do you think? And I'd say more blood filled, because I definitely see a lumen with stuff in it. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of some sort of inflammatory process, but I'm, I'm not... I'm In fact, to the point where there may be some telangiectasia there. So I see granulomas around hair follicles with lots of limbs and telangiectasia, and the plasma cells suggest maybe the face. Granulomatous rosacea. Granulomatous rosacea. So did you say GF? Mm -hmm. Where's the granuloma in GF? Everywhere. In the name. Yeah. There, there is no there. granuloma in the <laughs> tissue. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, so the, there is no mycosis in mycosis fungoides. There is no granuloma in granuloma facial other than in the name. <coughs> right? 
Um, granulum officiel is a chronic fibrosing vasculitis with cariorexis and eosinophils, no granuloma, whereas granulomas on the facial with telangiectasia and lymphs is probably rosacea. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm seeing fairly normal, well, a little bit of a last week sign for the stratum corneum. Okay. Uh, epidermis looks fairly unremarkable. And then there's a uh, sparse, uh, predominantly lymphocytic infiltrate. I can't quite tell if it's just a um, pale slide or if the collagen's more wispy beneath it. Yeah, that's a very good thing to question. Let's focus on your corneum a little bit. Is okay. it normal thickness or a little bit thick? It's a little bit thicker. A little bit thick. Does it, is it holding together or is it coming off in flakes? Uh, a little bit in flakes. Like, or, or is this like tinea versicolor? That's exactly right. Closer? That's exactly right. So there is only one scale that is non-perikeratotic and floats away, and that's TV. Right? So at scan, Everything you said, you got a little bit of lymph, you got a little, you know, your corneum's a little bit subacute in that you've got a little compact mm -hmm. red. So you've got a layered corneum that may make you think of tinea of some sort anyway. And then when you look at your corneum, it's just a little thick and it's floating away. Scale equals perikeratosis except for the fluffy float away scale of tinea versicolor. And now you've nailed it at scan. You want to look higher for the organism? I think All I can you want. See them. Yeah. But again, there, you know, it is far better already to know the answer at scan before you look higher, and then you're looking higher just for satisfaction and fun and, fun and grins and chuckles for sport. For sport. Exactly. <clears throat> It's a pretty big biopsy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's the difference between this normal dermis and that dermis? And it's got thicker, kind of ropey. Yeah. Collagen. Is there much going on here? Not a ton. No. But is there a lot going on there? Yeah, more nuclei there. Yeah, more nuclei. One might even say busy. Mm -hmm. Busy. Right? So you got a busy dermis. Centrally, and that's basically you're in a busy dermis differential. Okay. So busy dermis, um, you got collagen bundles with cells in between. That's kind of your busy dermis differential. First thing you're going to do is you're going to look over to see do you have overlying acanthosis. If there's overlying acanthosis, probably a DF. Mm -hmm. In this case, is that epidermis that terribly much different from this epidermis? No, looks the same. Looks pretty much the same. So I'm not seeing a DF like acanthosis. So possible it's a DF, but less likely now that we don't have acanthosis over that busy dermis. Okay, so what else is in your busy dermis differential? Sclerimix edema. Sclerimix. Anytime you say sclerimix, you have to say nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. What else? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I think about. Interstitial GA is another one. And then let's look a little higher in this busy dermis. Oops, it's kind of field here. Do you see how there's nuclear molding? How the nuclei are kind of irregular in shape and squared off? Like right there, see how they're not round, but where they want to mm -hmm. touch one another, they are absolutely flattened. Yes. What gives you linear files of hyperchromatic cells in a busy dermis with nuclear molding where they flatten off adjacent to one another? Leukemia. Leukemia absolutely can do that and give you a busy dermis. What else, anyone? Breast. Breast. Um, so actually, that's a pretty good differential. Leukemia versus breast is pretty much where you would be and then get 
markers and you know a keratin would be enough to tell you it's not leukemia it's it's metastatic breast but that would exactly be your differential so well done Encapsulated, so encapsulated suggests it's in the dermis with the fibrous capsule, capsule, as opposed to something hanging out of the epidermis with epithelium overlying. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Then, so if the epithelium goes under, it, we call that a collaret. Okay, so this is a pedunculated thing with an epithelial collaret. Lots of spaces, some of which are filled with red, so heme. Mm -hmm. And focally, although it's edematous, a suggestion that there are septi, so this breaks up into lobules. So what would be an edematous vascular lobulated lesion pedunculated with an epithelial collaret? Um, I don't yeah, want to jump in. Yeah, well, a ruptive lobular capillary hemangioma, which is a synonym for PG, pyogenic granuloma. Mm -hmm. Very good. <laughs> um, so it looks like a very small punch. Okay. Dermis. Okay, and we're going to look Oops. at that Something power. Cornea. Yep, what is it? Concerned about schemes. You are correct. Mm -hmm. So, first off, you look at this piece. See how there's a big oval hole in the corneum? Mm -hmm. If someone hands you a box, you want to know what's in the box. Right? Mm -hmm. They hand you a corneum with a hole, what's in the hole? Mm -hmm. right? That is human nature. That's human nature, right? <laughs> so then you start looking. What's in the box? And there's a big scabies mite in the box. Right? <coughs> <laughs> what you might get in real life, though, is this. Will you just have that hole sitting in the corneum about the size of a scabies mite? Um, and that's often all you get, and that's still diagnostic. A few eos down underneath, you look for a couple of little poop pellets in that um, round space. <clears throat> Okay, so James, last slide. And unfortunately, we got a little scratch on the slide there, but it looks like there's some like keratinocytic atopia. So could be reactive, could be real. Is your columnar basal layer intact, or is it wiped out? Oh, it looks somewhat wiped out. Looks somewhat wiped out. What broad differential does that put you into? Um, the lichenoid. The lichenoid differential. What things would be in your lichenoid differential, sir? So you got your LP, drug induced lichenoid, whatever you want to call it. Um, like lichenoid regression of melanoma, LP, LK, Kraft versus host disease, EM. <coughs> Not EM. Well, yeah. But that would be dead reds, it's really lichenoid. Right. But what else? I think we hit everything except one. Uh, syphilis, right? It's going to be there forever. Yeah, I'll give you, rarely, lupus. yeah, I'll give you points. Lupus, that would be a good one to put there. So, um, biopsies for melanocytic tend to be broad. Um, LP might be in the differential, <laughs> but what gives you, LP usually gives you a uniform compact red horn. Right. What gives you a fairly normal horn? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. <coughs> no, what I need is the Leviquin. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, this kind of focal hyperkeratosis probably sits adjacent to a hair follicle as follicular plugging. Mm -hmm. So, lupus is most likely. Okay. Thank you. We will stop with that, and we will say goodbye to everyone online.